This video that you're about to see is only for 18 and up fans of family and adult oriented DVD and Blu-ray movies on, for home video. Anybody under the age of 18 wants to see this picture, they got to be with guardian or parent. And only the guardian parent can make the comment only or else I'll get in trouble. And the underage will be spied on by cold, relentless, greedy business people. Well, hi there. This is your uh, family and adult DVD and Blu-ray reviewer. And I just got another movie that I ordered and we're about to open it up because it's never been reviewed. And I want to say also that it is totally getting a little bit closer for Roman in 3D to be released. They claim it'll be in the summertime of 2023. But us backers should get it early but don't be surprised it's still late. It takes a long time to fix all these things up and releases them. So let's open up this thing. Let me put on my glasses. Yes. Yes. One of the second silent films to be shot in 3D in 1922. Yes. And it's and it's based on a, a compile called A Hundred Years of 3D Movies. Over a century of fascinating fun and content, both 3D and regular TVs. And they include The Man from Mars. The Man from Mars. Yes. Now let's read the thing about it. Let's read the content. Now it says again, A hundred years of 3D movies over a century of fascinating fun content for both 3D and regular TVs. It's such a shame that this company didn't think to bring an anaglyphic version. And it reads like this. Oh, I was wrong. Plays 3D on Blu-ray player. Here's the back. And it says, yes, I'm acting like I'm in a 3D movie. I'm stretching my hands out like it, like I'm popping out and I'm popping this out. Do -do, do -do, do -do. Uh, SCT is dead. They want do 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 do. Remember that? Okay. Plays in 3D Blu-ray connected 3D TV sets and 3D projectors. Plays in other players and displays contain selection of material red and blue 3D formats. For use of any use of red and green, red and blue 3D glasses, so they got anaglyphic. The 1922 monument year for 3D scene of the world's first two feature length 3D movies. While the 3D version of The Man from Mars is sadly lost, a 2D copy remains here is presented in via Al conversion. The clever humorous situation and dialogue we can only experience seeing it live with a live audience in true 3D. Documentary wraparound tells of the sex of leading up to his release, as well as up, up until digital era 3D later. Also includes bonus material, uh, such as a full stereo card story, restored Captain Comics, and more. 2022 3D. Now, I'm going to have to review this and analyze it to give a, a, a real good discussion about it because these things can't be hurried. But I would say that the first silent 3D experiments were shot by Edwin S. Porter in 1915. There were just demonstrations. And uh, later on, 
A feature-length movie made this same year with Noah Berry Jr., who would appear in the talking 3D picture later on, Wings of a Hawk, uh, also um, did a movie called Power of Love. That's totally lost. But first, we will, I will view the movie, and I will give you my review of it. So let's take the covers off first in pretense 3D. This is the way the movies would do it. I can't see it. Okay. <laughs> okay, here it is. Again, here is the sides, and we open it up, and we got the explanation and the Blu-ray DVD. Now, I'm going to be reviewing this, and I will let you know later on. Oh yeah, I forgot to read you this. Unless otherwise, Mark will play in 3D through 3D Blu-ray players, a 3D display, um, but will otherwise play in Duke, play move, stereo card in red and blue, pulp, pulp rich reel, pulp rich reel in red and blue, Captain 3D restored, Captain 3D restored red and blue, digital technique, digital techniques, in red and blue main season teaser 3d town hampshire's uh trailer real 3d bugs three real bugs 3d trailer oh well i'll talk to you about this as soon as i as soon as i see this and i will give you a thoughtful review well Hello again, I just finished watching the movie. Actually, I finished watching the movie hours ago. And uh, I'll tell you something about it. Um, the comic strips in the, uh, in the DVD, um, the Blu-ray, excuse me, is only uh, anaglyphic. They don't include Polaroid conversions. And another problem is they don't include the anaglyphic version of the movie. And, uh, how do I feel about the movie? Well, the print is not the most excellent print ever. It's, it's an um, uneven contrasting, contrasty print because it's surviving. And, uh, as the man stated in the beginning, um, he didn't use, they didn't use the manual process. They used something else, uh, something that involves algorithms. But the point is, it's not as good as a surviving uh, Plasticon, uh, Plasticon 3D silence that was on the uh, 3D shorts uh, by Flickr Alley. Um, there is a death and width and height but the print is so bad it's hard to see it sometimes. And uh, I guess because it's not sharpest, but you get the close-ups and you see the deaths. But um, they didn't use the process that Hollywood uses that takes six months that involves making models of the, of the, of the content of the scenes and then they reshoot it with a virtual camera. And I don't think that's the process they use to, to uh, recreate this picture because uh, this was shot in New Hampshire. It's uh, variety films. Their budgets probably prevent them from using that process and it requires a lot of people. It takes about six months. But it's better than nothing. Um, now in the story, Grant Mitchell Grant Mitchell, I wrote it down because I didn't want to forget, excuse me, 
Grant Mitchell plays um, Arthur. He's just been kicked out of his house because he kicked out of his a room rent by um, by Isabel Vernon. Uh, he was so busy thinking of new experiments, he forgot to pay his rent. Margaret Irving plays Mary next door. Her mother needs more money because he wants, she wants her to keep her own money. She makes a living as a secretary. So she has a, a room. She has, she, she's, has, she's a, a offering a room. And um, her mother has been portrayed by uh, Gertrude, okay, Gertrude Hillman as Mrs. Lane. And uh, Mary at first disapproves of it, but then she thinks she can take him in because she has an interest in him, uh, Grant Mitchell. Uh, he would play the, these bosses in your Warner Brothers uh, comedies and your, uh, back in, in later in the 1930s. This is when he was young. Now the point is he ends up winning a contest about the powers of the mind. Two thousand dollars, and uh, his her her mother said uh, was trying to refuse it because he didn't have any money. But he shows the check, so he goes in. But he ends up buying a lot of stuff because he's already invented a, uh, a clock that doesn't make any noise. Now he wants to invent a. a, a, a Tell a radio, a radio, a ham radio that contacts Mars. Well, the Martians in the 1920s have big heads and big ears, so this was shot in 3D, it would pop out. 1920s style. And there's a scene where the Martian woman takes a Martian little girl. Uh, to a Martian museum where they have anthropology and it shows a scale, sc skeleton of an, a Martian of the past with a huge skull and a, mar and a skull of a, of a human and the little girl asks with such a small skull they must, they must be more backwards she emphasizes that as he's contacting them but because when he contacts them he gets, he gets ideas that helps them to be make money, like how to make uh, diamonds out of coal, how to make clay, how, how, to, make gold, how to make gold out of clay. And um, in, if he and Mary eventually gets married and he becomes rich. And it shows how successful he is and um, he gets ideas from the Martians who communicate with him. Now these Martians, the way they look like, is the kind of Martians you would see in the 1950s film. And um, in spite of the fact that it's a, not a very good print, there's some depth and dimension in it. It's not sh sharp and clear because of the budget in New Hampshire. They could have made it better, but it would, you know, six, probably cost thousands of dollars. For Universal and Paramount, that'd be cheaper. They did a cheaper process. It involves algorithms. But it, it, it's better than nothing. It's, it, it, it's better than nothing. But in the end, it turns out to be a dream. And he's so depressed because he considers himself a loser. But Mary has already took that no it took that uh, tickless clock to her boss played by W H Burton yeah W H Burton he plays Mrs Sterling and surprises him he's willing to go a lot invest in that watch invest in that um, tickless clock and he gives him so gives him a lot of money for it happy ending now um, this was an average silent picture shot in 3D and it was a comedy but if only the surviving print was in better shape than it was real super sharp 
the conversion, the cheaper conversions that, 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 uh, that variety films used would have been far more sharper, far more noticeable. But like I say, can't complain, it's better, better than nothing. Better than nothing. But, um, and then there's some pull, there's some pull, pull rich processing scenery. And, um, the and it works and it requires one of those uh, glasses where it's black and there's no lens on the other side but it works in the anaglyphic version that they got in there it works good with the red and blue 3d lenses and um, I didn't notice very much in the Polaroid versions but it worked a lot better than than uh, the, with the, the red and green 3d thing and uh, as a cap and as Captain 3D, far as that is concerned, the same guy who talks about 3 narrates it and shows different scenes from the comic strip in 3D. But it was not in Polaroid. They should have made it in Polaroid too. Um, and he fights his enemies, uh, which is the which is the cat people, the uh, paper dolls, the paper doll men. And Hard Hat, a construction monster. And uh, it also includes previews of locally done scenic and nature films that were shot in 3D in New Hampshire in variety films. And they look pretty interesting. Now, is this uh, worth getting? Well, you have to take you have to take the the age of the film. Yes, it ain't the best 3D in the world, but it's worth it. It it it, it, it it's, it's worth it to my collection, and at least it survived because the power of love did not survive, except for a fragment which they converted into 3D. A, a picture of a scene from they converted it into 3D. Oh yeah, and, uh, they also show the process they use a cheaper process. It involves uh, stenciling the images, and they, they showed a demonstration of a photograph, and boom, the guy was in 3D and was shot in 2D photograph, but the problem is that with this stencil pro process, he had a cardboard cutout look, so it wasn't the best. It was width and depth and, and dimension, dimension, width and height, all that, but it, his face was cardboard looking. But, um, as I said, uh, this was pretty much of a good movie. Now, if you like, the com if you like this show, please uh, comment and subscribe. Even if you didn't like it, make a comment. Make some suggestions. Bye. I had to do this extra recording because I made some mistakes. In the earlier part of the video, I made a claim that there was no Polaroid 3D version of the comic strip. But I looked at it again, and there was anaglyphic and 3D, and the Polrich experiments and the other 3D experiments comes in both Polaroid and anaglyphic, too. And uh, I was getting so confused about it because they put the uh, they bu they put the Polaroid and the anaglyph versions on the same menus. Why didn't they put it on separate menus, not to create confusion? That's my only criticism about this. And all the previews of the new uh, nature and docu documentaries on nature and some other subjects made in New Hampshire in 3D, well, the trailers were Polaroid only. That's all I want to say. Bye.